Joining us today from the Alliance for the Future of Agriculture in Nebraska is the Executive Director, Steve Martin. Steve, always good to see you. Thanks for making the time. Hey, Bryce. Thank you, and uh, hope the holidays were good for you. Yeah, it's a busy time of year, but like I said, appreciate you making time for us to uh, look back on 2023. And, of course, we'll preview some of the things that you all have coming up in the new year. As we look back on 2023, Steve, you all are about, uh, obviously, expanding livestock in Nebraska. As you look back, how was the year a uh, big picture for you? You know, it was an interesting year. Uh, you know, our mission is to grow the livestock industry in Nebraska, and we do that in uh, multiple ways, I guess. Uh, obviously, working one-on-one -on -one with farmers uh, to help them grow their operations, and we did see success in, in that area. Um, in pretty much every species too. We had uh, new broiler houses being built. Uh, Smart Chicken continues to expand their operations in Southeast Nebraska. We actually even had an egg laying operation start uh, construction out in Banner County. Um, so way out there, um, which is an interesting project. Um, you know, beef, we still see growth in the beef industry, not only just in the feed yards, but also with some of the confined cattle um, opportunities, deep pits, hoop barns, um, things like that. Swine, we added about 90,000 new finishing spaces this year, this last year. And, you know, that's really in a tough market condition with swine. Uh, but there's still people out there that are, you know, looking forward, uh, looking ahead to the future and, and thinking that things are going to get better. So they want to be positioned to be ready. Uh, and then the dairy industry, we had uh, growth in uh, processor uh, in Norfolk with milk specialties uh, created an opportunity for our local dairy farmers to add about a thousand cows to the dairy herd. So great opportunity for our local dairy producers. Steve, I want to go back on the poultry front. You mentioned that uh, new operation coming online in Banner County. What can you tell us about that? That's a little bit of a unique element for the state of Nebraska. That is, and, and that's not an area of the state that we have a lot of poultry production. Uh, that is uh, shell eggs that will go uh, direct to consumers. And, uh, you know, mainly they're going to target the, the front range of Colorado. Um, you know, that's just a, an, an area that, uh, you know, Colorado is maybe a little bit feed deficit. So um, you're tapping into some feed resources in, in Nebraska and then taking the finished product into a, a market. So um, it, I, I'm excited about that one. It's a great opportunity for that farmer to, to capture some manure, too, uh, for that soil out there. You mentioned uh, some of the swine expansion, too. I have a conversation with my grandfather. He has uh, raised pigs uh, his entire farming career. He talked about uh, in some of the earlier days of his career, pigs were always the mortgage boost. <laughs> he could always count on that. It's been a challenging year for the swine industry. But talk about those who are expanding. What's, what's uh, kind of the size and scope of those operations? Where do they see the opportunities? You know, uh, there's a little bit of variation in that. Um, a lot of them are your kind of more traditional 2,500 head finished barns. And and these are uh, about half of them, I'd say, are replacing old barns. So they actually tore down some older facilities, rebuilt. Uh, you get a lot of efficiency in growth rate and feed efficiency with, with the newer facility. Um, and then the other half are, <clears throat> I would say, new uh, new finishing spaces, just looking at the opportunity um, to move closer to where our packers are, um, you know, as we really with all the, the sectors, um, the closer you can get the animals to where the processing happens, you save on a lot of fuel charges. And, you know, luckily a lot of our packers are in rural parts of the state. Well, from the perspective of AFAN, as I understand it, Steve, you come along with some of these uh, producers on the ground and help them work through some of the challenges when they're when it comes to expanding, whether it be uh, local zoning, uh, you know, regulations, and kind of walk them through both those local and state rules. As you look back in the past year, any unique circumstances as you did uh, the work of AFAN? You know, we we have uh, a challenge in that area um, with you mentioned local zoning. And every county has uh, the ability to, to um, control where they want to put livestock facilities. And so the rules are different for every county because they, you know, they're unique. They make their own, uh, they make their own rules. So we really work hand in hand with the county officials to help them understand what the livestock facility is, how it operates. You know, there's always concern about things that are getting built near neighbors. So, 
uh, the not my backyard, um, totally understandable. Um, but we want to help educate people on, you know, what that really is. And, you know, sometimes it's disappointing when something gets turned down. Um, but, you know, it just tells us that we need to keep working on uh, that educational piece and, and make sure people see these things. Um, it's hard for the county officials when they have to make a decision on um, a building or an operation that they don't, they've never seen before. They don't have experience with it. And then you get uh, a lot of fear and fear mongering and, you know, uh, that sort of thing. And you just don't know what to do. So we try to get the real facts. Uh, University of Nebraska uh, has been great, uh, great resource for us. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just doing a lot of work to try to make sure that we get a, a real picture of what's going on out there. Of course, over the next few months, I'm sure you'll be on the road doing a lot of those uh, winter meetings as, as those will be popping up. Do you look forward, though, to 2024? What are you most excited about for the work uh, that you all do at AFAN, Steve? You know, I think we have another year shaping up like this year where, uh, you know, it might be a little bit tough in some of the aspects of interest rates and cost of construction. Um, but there's a lot of hope for the future. And I, th I can see all four species, uh, you know, pork, poultry, uh, dairy and beef all having opportunities to expand and grow. And what that does, even this last year, um, with the with the little bit of um, new construction we had, uh, it increased the usage of corn in Nebraska by 1.7 million bushels and increased the consumption of soybeans by 440,000 uh, bushels that was not being consumed a year ago. So um, that's new livestock in the state consuming uh, the products that we raise and do a great job with. Um, and that just helps the local prices improve, uh, improves basis and uh, creates opportunities all across rural communities. Yeah, Steve, I've heard it been said when uh, you can have your corn and soybeans walk out of the state on two or four legs. That's a better case scenario as compared to uh, shipping out the raw commodities. Let me give you the final word. Anything else you'd like to share with us today? You know, if people are interested in what AFAN's doing, we have a monthly newsletter we send out. You can go to our website, becomeafan.org, uh, to sign up for that. It's pretty uh, short and sweet, but we will try to keep people updated on what we're doing. And I'll throw out the plug, you know, we are a nonprofit organization and we do all the work that we do for free. Um, so we want to thank all of our partners uh, that support us. Uh, Farm Credit Services of America is our premier partner and uh, does a lot to, uh, to support Nebraska farmers and ranchers. Steve Martin from the Alliance for the Future of Agriculture, our guest as we look back on 2023, preview what's ahead in the new year as well.